Hello there and welcome to Big Friendly Grub. I hope you're doing well. Um, firstly, apologies for the lighting today. Uh, it's a bit grey and overcast outside today, but it's also really, really muggy. So if at any point I start to sweat a bit during this, I'm just sorry. I'm so sorry in advance. Yeah, it was a lovely day yesterday and today the weather has decided to go back to its typical British, screw you guys, no sun for you typical weather really so apologies for the lighting and all of that today but enough of my apologies already making excuses already today we are doing something a little different we're not doing any baking today um one of my friends messaged me on instagram saying can you do something with a bit more color and basically to say <laughs> less meat less wheat gluten whatever and also less like dairy. And to be fair, that's a good point. Pretty much everything I have done so far has revolved around baking and stuff that generally comes out looking a little bit brown, shall we say, in hue. So we are going to be mixing it up a bit today. We are going to be doing something that is vegetarian, has no dairy in it, and is not baking. We're doing some good old fashioned cooking. I say old fashioned cooking, this is something that's fairly new to me actually, but you know what I mean. So what I'm gonna be cooking for you today is actually something from like the Middle East and Africa area. It's traditionally had for breakfast, but it could also be had for lunch or dinner if you so chose, but it's traditionally a breakfast dish um, in those areas. It is called shakshuka or chachuka, I think. It depends on which area you come from. I've been calling it shakshuka. So that's what I'm going to do throughout this video because if I start changing it now, I'm just going to get confused and it doesn't take much for me to be confused. So what it is, shakshuka means a mixture in Arabic, I believe. Tell me if I'm wrong, I might be, but I believe that's what it means. And I think if as long as you've got like eggs and tomatoes in it, I think you're all good. I mean, you can probably chop and change what you have in it, but we're going for like onions and peppers and tomatoes and loads and loads of good stuff and loads of spices. There's gonna be quite a bit in terms of ingredients to this, but it's actually quite simple. So I think there's nothing else left to do except for to do our usual rundown of the ingredients and we can get started. So follow me. Also, new camera angle today, yay. So I'm gonna quickly run you through our ingredients. But if you don't want to sit here and listen to me talking through them all, then I will put them up onto your screen right now. So you can pause it here, write them down if you want to, or they are in the description on YouTube, or if you're on the website, they are down in the recipe. But this is so you don't have to sit here and listen to me explain all the ingredients. So first off, we're gonna need two onions. These are just normal brown onions. Quite large ones would be good. Then we're gonna need Four peppers, four bell peppers. I've gone for two red, two yellow. You can go for four red, four green, whatever your little heart desires. And you're gonna need four eggs. I've gone for four really nice Burford brown eggs. They've got really nice orangey rich yolks. Get the best eggs that you can. You could even go for duck eggs if you're feeling particularly posh. If you're a vegan, then you don't have to do eggs. You could do tofu. I've seen variants where there are tofu. May not strictly be shakshuka then. That is worth looking up. I've not done it myself but that is a alternative if you are a vegan. And you're also gonna need two tins of chopped tomatoes. Nothing special about them, just regular chopped tomatoes. And I am also gonna add two chilies because I like a bit of kick in my food, that's all. You don't have to have these. If you don't like spice, don't include them, I am. These are two just regular red chilies. Then for a bit of fresh greenery, I am adding some fresh coriander and some fresh parsley as well. Again, if you don't like coriander, don't include it. If you don't like parsley, don't include it. Just a bit of green is nice in it. You'll also need woo, a bit of tomato puree. And then for seasonings, I'm adding some salt, paprika, some cumin seeds, some caraway seeds, and some cayenne pepper. So that's all the seasonings I'm adding. You can add more, you can add less. It's entirely up to you. But one of the brilliant things about shakshuka is all like the different spices that you can put into it because it is originally from like, you know, like I said, the Middle East and Africa. So it's full of spice and flavor. So it's entirely up to you what ones you put in, but I recommend that you go for that kind of selection. I'm also adding three garlic cloves, which I've already crushed as you can see here. And last, but by no means least, you need some olive oil. Um, just for kicking in. And that's it, so let's get started because I am going to be having this for my breakfast, lunch, 
probably by the time I'm done with this, it'll be about 11 o'clock. So let's say brunch. So let's get started, because I'm hungry. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to chop up our veg. I'm not going to give you a huge masterclass on how to chop up veg, because as long as it is fairly well chopped, you're all good. But first, I've already peeled my onion, as you can see. I'm just going to chop it down the middle. Cut the root on, because it makes it easier to chop. Then I'm going to just quickly, finely slice it like so. Just into strips. Ooh, out the way. All the time, keeping your fingers out the way. And just tilt it. Chop, chop, chop. Always keeping your fingers out of the way. Same again. So I'm going to do the same to the other one. Whew, these are some strong onions. Oh dear, you can't see, but I am actually crying at the moment. Uh, from the onions, of course, not just having sudden random attack of feelings. Maybe onions are sentient and they're actually passing on the guilt to us because we're chopping them up. Oh, oh sorry, onions. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Anyway. So that's all our onion chopped up. I popped it into a bowl, moved that to one side. We've got a nice lot of onion there. Now I'm going to chop up our peppers. Everyone's got their own way of chopping up peppers. Um, this is my preferred way. So I just chop the top off here. And then you can see we've got the inside and I just like to go kind of round the outside here like so. And that gives you all the sides and the top of your pepper. Then you can just chop these bits off as well. Nice and simple, then you don't get any or many of the seeds, there's one there, get that out of the way. And then with these bits, we just chop them into fairly fine strips, like so. Being careful of your fingers. Then you can just chop these top bits as well. Then I'm just going to do the same thing to the other three peppers. There we go, that's all our peppers chopped. Nice lot of peppers there, but ooh, this will wilt down. So don't worry if it looks like a lot. And lastly, I'm just going to chop our chilli as well. Um, I am going to just leave all the seeds in. Um, like I said, I like a bit of spice in mine. Ooh, this one looks like it's got a mini chilli in it. But most of the heat actually comes from like the flesh within the chilies rather than the seeds themselves, if I'm not mistaken. So more like this, this part is where kind of like you get the heat from. I don't know if you can see that. I'm just going to chop these into bits. And that's all our chilies chopped up. And now we can actually start cooking this bad boy. So let's get started. I'm very excited. I'm so hungry. <laughs> so I've already put my pan over a medium high heat. I've got the oil in it already, probably about a tablespoon's worth. And that has been heating up for a few minutes now just to get it nice and hot. And I'm just gonna add in our chopped onions. Start to sizzle there. And also, oh, that one was a bit keen there and our peppers as well, so get those in too. So I'm just gonna mix these together, and these are just gonna have a good probably five, 10 minutes to cook and just to wilt down. And um, this is gonna make these peppers and onions really nice and sweet. So just allow them to cook and wilt down, and just making sure you move them around occasionally so that um, the ones on the bottom don't burn. It's a really nice recipe to make like kind of early in the morning um, to have for breakfast quite a relaxing one to make, I find. It's one of those recipes where the more time you take with it, more care, the nicer it is. Just get these kind of like wilted down, get them nice and sweet. All that lovely color in there as well. I highly recommend that you use a pan which has a lid with it because that will come in handy later. If you don't have one, it doesn't matter. Uh, we can do the latter stage in the oven. So don't worry too much if you don't have one, but I do find that you get the best results with a lid and a pan. We're not looking to get loads of color on these. We're looking for them to wilt down and just become softer and sweeter. Um, if you start to brown the onions, then they will become bitter, which is what we are not after. So 
So these have had a good, ooh, about probably about a good 10, maybe even nearer 15 minutes now. You can see they've all wilted down quite a lot. I can actually smell they're getting to that point where they're just probably about to start to brown. So this is probably about right. So what I'm going to do now is quickly chuck in my chilies. And my garlic. You don't want to chuck through the garlic in too early because uh, that will burn, become bitter, which we don't want. So I'm going to just stir these in, cook those for a minute or so. Oh, you can catch that garlic already. I love garlic. I'll put it in everything if I could. No, well, maybe not everything. Maybe not like the panna cotta we did like a week or two ago. Um, yeah, probably not in that, but you know what I mean. Any savory dish that uh, will suit it, it'll go in. And just adding in that chili and that garlic and makes such a difference to the smells that you get out of it. Such a good dish. Right, our garlic and our chili have had a minute or two to cook in. And now I'm gonna start adding in our seasonings and our spices. This is my favorite part because the smells in here are about to get lit, son. Oh, something less cringe. Right, so I am gonna be eyeballing this, but feel free to use some measuring spoons or something like that. So I'm gonna add in about a teaspoon of salt. It's about a teaspoon. And probably about two teaspoons of smoked paprika. Uh, let's say that's one. And um, let's say that's two. You can smell that already, that's amazing. And probably a little bit, not much, about half a teaspoon of cayenne pepper. And probably about teaspoon of cumin seeds, I nearly said caraway, they are up next then. Yeah, about a teaspoon of caraway seeds as well. That was probably actually about half a teaspoon. But quite a strong flavor of caraway, so actually a half a teaspoon will work. Yeah, just stir that all in, and really get that smell from the uh, spices there, that's amazing. Work all those flavors in. You can see this is really wilted down now, and these peppers and onions and everything will be nice and sweet. Right, the spices have had a minute or so to cook through, so I am now gonna add in our chopped tomatoes. So first tin, get all that in there. Tin number two as well. Get that all in there. And I am then just gonna mix that all in. Mix it all through nicely. I'm gonna turn up the heat to a high. I'm adding in a good, probably about a tablespoon there of tomato puree. And mix that in as well. So mix that all thoroughly. Then we're just going to let that come up to, so it starts to bubble. In fact, that's starting already. So that was nice and quick. You can see it's already starting to pop and bubble here. So I've brought the heat back down to about medium. And I am now just going to leave this to cook and bubble away for about a good 20 to 30 minutes because we want this to thicken up and become like a sauce. So yeah, it takes a little bit of time, but it's completely worth it. Yeah, we'll go and leave that, come back and stir it every now and again, but otherwise leave it and let it simmer and bubble away to reduce down to a nice sauce. So we'll see you in about 20 to 30 minutes. Our uh, shakshuka has had a good 20 minutes to cook and bubble away. And you can see it's uh, thickened up quite nicely. A good way to tell if it's thick enough is just to be able to pull some of it away. So you can see the bottom of the pan and it doesn't fill in too quickly. If it starts to fill up with liquid straight away, then it's still not quite there. This is a good way to tell. So you can see you've got a nice gap there not filling up too quick. So this is about right. So next I've just roughly chopped up our coriander and parsley and I'm just gonna slide that in like so. I'm just gonna stir that in for, ooh, keep it in the pan. Let's stir that in for a nice bit of green and a bit of flavor. Like I said, if you don't like either coriander or parsley, then you don't have to use them. You could use something else. You could try using chives maybe or thyme. It's entirely up to you really. You don't have to use any herb of this sort if you don't want to. The world is your oyster, or shakshuka in this case. So just quickly stir that in. You see you've got nice flecks of green in there now. So we are now at the point where this is nice and thick. We've got all our ingredients in. 
it's now just the time to add the eggs really. So we need to create a bit of a well here. This is why I said to make sure that you can get a bit of clearance between the sauce and the bottom of the pan. And then we'll grab our egg and then into that well, we'll just pop that in there. Um, I pop that into a bowl because it makes life a hell of a lot easier. And then I'll just do it for the other three eggs. So egg number two, let's pop you about here, shall we say. So another well there. And one more well over here. And lastly, a final well about here. So now what we do is we pop our lid on and let those poach in the sauce for about a good 10 minutes. So we'll be back then. I'm just gonna lower this down to say like a, a medium low, I would say. This is the point where if you don't have this lid, you can put it in the oven at a fairly low temperature. I would say about 160, give it 10 minutes in the oven at that temperature and it will do the same effect. It won't poach the eggs, but it will bake them and hopefully you'll have a nice runny yolk after that time as well. So we're going to give them about 10, 10 minutes, I would say. You can see the eggs have poached over and they seem quite firm. Hopefully they're not too firm. The eggs were too firm. And yeah, this looks good to me. I think we can now serve this up and have a try of it. Looks really good. It smells amazing. Wish we had smell vision here because, uh, or anywhere to be fair, because <laughs> it hasn't been invented. Probably a good thing really for most cases. But yeah, let's take this and go and serve it up and give it a try. So I'm over at our traditional spot by the window because I was just taking the thumbnail for the video. Um, you can see this is cooked up really nicely. It's become into a nice thick sauce. The eggs are poached. Um, it would be nice if they were a bit runnier, but that's easily rectified by just giving them like five minutes instead of 10 minutes, I would say. But this looks really nice and I am gonna serve this up and give it a try. Don't know why I said that like that, but let's give it a go. There we go, one big old bowl of shakshuka. It smells amazing. It's great, like I said, for breakfast, lunch, dinner, any time really, because it's such a savory meal. Traditionally eaten at breakfast, but it's quarter to 12 now, so it's technically my lunchtime. It looks great, it smells great. My only quibble is that I probably should have done those eggs for slightly less time. About five minutes probably would have worked. That's fine, it's still gonna taste great. I think traditionally you can have it with flatbread or something like that. I'm keeping it a bit lighter and not having any carbs with it. I think sometimes people crumble feta cheese over it, but again, I'm leaving that out, making sure it's dairy free this time, but it's yours to do with as you will. It's great by itself and that is how I'm gonna have it right now. So I've got a bit of egg here, bit of everything else. I'm gonna give it a try. Come back egg, woo. Oh, hot, really hot still, but. Oh, oh, that's really, really nice. You get all the sweet onions and peppers and tomatoes first. And then afterwards you get like the, the spices, all the herbs and things you put in. And because I've put chilies in it and a bit of cayenne, you just get a nice hit of heat afterwards. It's really, really good. It's such a great alternative to your usual breakfast. There's so many good things in there with all the onions and the peppers and everything else. So if you're a bit fed up with your full Englishes and your eggs benedicts or whatever, not sure why you would be, they're great as well. But if you want something that's a bit healthier, a bit lighter, but still really, really filling and really, really flavoursome, I highly recommend you give this a go. That's pretty much it from me this time. Hope you enjoyed this. It was something a little different, no baking this time, nice bit of cooking, something for breakfast, lunch or dinner. So if you enjoyed this, let me know. If you want to see more things like this, again, let me know. Also, if you enjoyed the video, give it a like, maybe even subscribe to the channel if you're feeling a bit saucy, hit the notifications thing, all that usual stuff people say on YouTube to get you to like their videos. Thanks for watching this one, and I will see you on the next Big Friendly Grub. I'm gonna go enjoy this. Bye.